um, I think I, I talked to literally all of you seconds ago, so, um, hello, oh, but we have some newcomers, welcome. Uh, so hi, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Quinn, I gathered this group of folks together because I selfishly wanted to do a play, because I was bored, uh, and then somewhere along the way, it became so much bigger than me. We decided to make it a benefit for the high school, for Burlington High School Drama Club, because yeah, they're stuck in Macy's, they couldn't sell tickets to their last show because of COVID, so like, come on, let's get them some money, right? Get them back on their feet. Um, we have put this production together on a pretty much zero dollar budget. Uh, printing the scripts was our highest expense. <laughs> So, we, we really appreciate you giving us the benefit of the doubt. And also, we're just so proud of what we've made, so we hope you enjoy it too. So without further ado, please enjoy Much Ado. letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. Yeah, sounds like he's close, too. Uh, how many gentlemen have they lost in this action? Uh, no one is important. <laughs> well, the victory is twice itself when the achievement brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor upon a young Florentine named Claudio. Oh, Claudio. Claudio's great. Don Pedro thinks so, too. Nah, he's blown everyone away. Can't even tell you. I pray you, is Signor Smooth returned from the wars or no? Signor uh, Smooth? What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh, oh Benedict! Yeah, he's back as sweet as ever. He set up camp here in Messina and challenged Cupid at his work. And I, the fool, reading the challenge, did place a bullseye at my heart. <laughs> I pray you, how many more hath he killed in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I owe apology to all of his killing for teaching him his aim. Uh -huh. Faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, but he will be meet with you. I doubt it not. He, he does strike true, his generals say? You had the shiny prize of valor. He hoped to claim it. He's a very valiant killer. Yes, he hath an excellent stomach for it. You must not have escaped my niece. There is a kind of merry war between Signor Benedict and her. They never meet. But they have a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went limping off, and now is the whole man governed with one. So if he have wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for the difference between himself and his horse. For it is all the wealth he hath left to be known a reasonable creature. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Every month? Benedict's like that? Is that possible? Very easily possible. He wears his faith, but as the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. Oh, this guy's not in your books, huh? No. And he were, I would burn my study. <laughs> but I pray you, who is his companion? Is there no young square now that will make a voyage with him to the devil? Uh, it looks like he's chosen his hat to go with the miserable Claudio. Come to meet your trouble. It is the fashion of the world to avoid cost, yet you encounter it. <laughs> ah. Never has trouble come to my house in the likeness of your grace, nor trouble being God. Comfort should be me. <laughs> you embrace your charge too willingly. Oh, this is my daughter. I think so. Her father has told me many times. Was he in doubt, lady, that he asked you thus? No, Signor Benedict, for then you were but a child. Truly, the lady mothers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable mother. Come, Leonata. It were rather a blessing to be like her mother than her father. <sighs> I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. 
nobody marks you. Why, my dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if you come in her presence. Why, then, is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all women, only you excepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly, I love none. A dear happiness to women! They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood that I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God, keep your ladyship still on that mind, so that some gentleman or other may escape a predestinate scratched face. Oh, scratching could not make it worse than twere such a face as yours were. Oh, oh, well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would, my horse, at the speed of your tongue. But keep your way, in oh. God's name. I'd have an end. A typical retreat. Your horse is more an ass with an end like that. And that is the sum oh. of all, Leonata. <clears throat> Senor Benedict, Count Claudio, my dear friend Leonata hath invited us all. I tell her we shall stay at least a month, and she heartily prays that some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear she's no hypocrite, but prays from the heart. Let me bid you welcome, my lords. Being reconciled with the prince, your brother, I owe you all due. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, thank you. Not as many words, but thank you. If it please your grace, lead on. Now, your arm, Leonato, we go together. <laughs> uh, Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Signora Leonata? I, I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Or would you have to? Would you have me answer after my custom as a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee speak in sober judgment. I, only this commendation can I afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other than as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest diamond sport, I pray thee tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady e'er I looked upon. I see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There's her cousin, and she when not possessed with a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent of turning husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Is it come to this? Ah, in faith, hath not the world but one man? Shall I never meet a bachelor of thirty again? Go to! Oh, oh, look, the prince has come to seek you. Come now, what secret hath held you here that you follow not to Leonatus? Oh, I, I would, your grace, would constrain me to tell you. I charge thee on thy allegiance. Oh, mark you this. Claudio, I can be as secret as a silent man. I would have you think so, but on my allegiance. Mark you this on my allegiance. He's in love. <laughs> With who? With Hero, Leonatus' daughter. This were so, so were it uttered. Amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thoughts. In faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, I spoke mine. <laughs> that I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be worthy, nor know how she is loved, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever the obstinate heretic in despite of beauty, yet I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. <laughs> no, 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 with hunger, with sickness, with anger, my lord, but not with love. In time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. Well, if ever the sensible Benedict do, pluck off the bull's horns and stick them in my forehead, and let my grave be early digged with the inscription, Here lies Benedict the married man. Well, in the meantime, good Senor Benedict, repair thee to Leonatus, commend me to her, and tell her I shall not fail her at supper, for she hath made great preparation. Here goes Benedict, the unmarried man. Uh, my liege, your highness now may do me good. My love is thine to teach. Teach it, but how? Uh, hath Leonata any sons, my lord? No daughter but hero, and she's her only heir. Dost thou affect her? <laughs> oh, my lord. When you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking to the name of love. Mm. 
but now, now I'm returned. And all those thoughts come thronging, soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou wilt be like a lover presently, and tire the hero with a book of words. If thou dost love good hero, then <laughs> cherish it, and I will break with her, and with her mother, and she shall be thine. Was not to this end that thou begins to twitch so fine a tale? Well, lest my liking may too sudden seem, I would have solved it with a longer treatise. Ah, oh, what need the bridge more winding than the stream? The straightest path is a necessity. Look, Claudio, I shall assume thy part in some disguise, and tells fair hero, I'm Claudio. <laughs> and in her bosom I shall unclasp my heart, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then, afterward, I shall break with her, and she shall be thine. Come, in practice, let us put it presently. Where is that servant that attends you, that Balthazar? Have they provided the music? Oh, he's been very busy about it. But sister, I can tell you of some strange news that you have not yet dreamt of. Is it good? Well, it shows well outwardly. The prince and young Claudio I overheard walking in our orchard. The prince discovered of Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to announce it this night in a dance. And if he found her accordant, to make wedding preparations with you. <laughs> well, well, but we will hold this as a dream until it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter Withel, so that she be better prepared for an answer, if her adventure this be true. Go you and tell her of it. <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah! With the good year, my lord, why are you so thus out of measure sad? Your brother has recently taken you into his grace, though of course it would be impossible for you to take root but by the fair weather that you make yourself. And I'd rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. Can't hide what I am. I sleep when I am drowsy. I eat when I have stomach. And I am sad when I have cause. And I should be sad with these fair and noble folk whose love and fake smiles are given only in exchange for such suffocating dignity as no person should be expected of. Would that I could show these people for what they are. Come, my lord. Can you not use your dissatisfaction? No one else is going to use it, so I will use it all. I'll waste not a drop. Um, who, who comes here? Oh, Braccio. What news? I came yonder from a great supper. Oh, the prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonata. And I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Huh. Will that serve any model to build mischief on? What fool is it that betrothes himself to unquietness? Mary, it's your brother's right hand. The most exquisite Claudio? Even he. And who and who? What way looks he? Mary, on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonata. It's a very forward march, chick. I overheard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Huh. You know what? This might serve as some model to build mischief on. That young upstart could use a good overthrow, so if we can cross him anyway, I bless ourselves every way. You're sure about this and will assist me? To the death, my lord. Well then, let us head to the banquet, lest they be cheerful without me. I wait upon your lordship. Was not Don John here at supper? I saw him not. How tartly that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. He is of a very <laughs> melancholy disposition. He were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. 
The one is too like an image and says nothing. The other too like my lady's youngest son, ever more tattling. Then take half of Signor Benedict's tongue and put that in Don John's mouth and half of Don John's sour tongue on Signor Benedict's <laughs> face. Ooh, and... With a good leg and a good foot, <laughs> sweet aunt, and money enough in his purse. Why such a man would win any woman in the world <laughs> if he could get her goodwill. By my troth, niece, thou shalt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I had rather lie with a hedgehog. You may light upon a husband that hath no beard. But what should I do with him? Dress him in school clothes and set him learning his numbers? <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me, and he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Shudder, I hope you will be ruled by your mother. Yes, Faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Mother, as it please you, but for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Mother, as it please me. Well, I do hope to see you fitted with a husband some day, niece. Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a piece of valiant dust? To make an account of her life to a clod of wayward mud? No, aunt, all none. Adam's sons are my brethren, and truly I hold it a sin to match in my kindred. Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in this kind, you know your answer. Uh, the fault will be in the music, cousin, if you be not wooed in good time. If the prince be too important, tell him there is measure in everything, and so dance out the answer. For hear me, hero, wooing, wedding, and repenting is as a scotch jig, a measure, and a syncopace. The first suit is hot and hasty as a scotch jig and full as fantastical. The wedding, mannerly, modest as a measure. And then comes repentance and with his bad legs falls into the syncopace faster and faster until he sinks into his grave. <laughs> Cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. I have a good eye, aunt. I can see a barn by daylight. Sister, make room, the revelers approach. <laughs> Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing and I am yours for a walk, especially when I walk away. Ah, with me in your company. I may say so when I please. And when please you to say so? When I like your favor. For God defend the loot should be like the case. My visor is like a church steeple. Within lies that which would be loved. Why then your visor should be crossed. Why, how now? How could a man in love ever be crossed? I know you well enough. You are Signor Don John. Uh, I, I, I don't worry, I am not. Oh, I know you by your shoulders, sullen slouch. Uh, in, in, in faith, I, I counterfeit him. <laughs> you could not do the man so ill well unless you were he. Look, here's his cold hand all up and down. You are he. I don't know what I am not. Uh, do you think that I do not recognize you by the shortness of your reply? Oh. God's grace, send me a partner who can dance. Amen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and keep him out of my face once the dance is over. Answer some more priests. No more words. The priest would answer prayers. <laughs> will you not tell me who told you so? No, you shall pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Not now. That I was disdainful and that I parrot all my wit from others' mouths? Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. Well, who's he? <laughs> I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? Who is he? Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. His only gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh both with him and at him. I'm sure he is about. When I know the gentleman lady, I'll tell him what you say. Oh, do, do! He'll but break a comparison or two on me, which, peradventure not being marked or laughed at, strikes him into melancholy. And then there's a partridge wing saved, for the poor fool will eat no supper that night. 
we must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Nay, if they lead to any ill, I'll leave them at the next turning. Sure enough, the brother is enamored on Hero. He's left to break with her mother, Leonata, about it. The women follow her. It looks like just one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Uh, uh, sir, are you not good Signor Benedict? Uh, you know me well, for I am he. Well, listen, you are very near my brother in his love, and uh, he is enamored on Hero. I bid you, dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You could play the part of an honest man in it. Uh, how know you he loves her? I heard him swear it. <gasps> so did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let's go to the banquet. I'm hungry. Oh, I'm starving. Thus enter I in name of Benedict. I hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so. The prince swoos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things, save in the office and affairs of love. Therefore, let all hearts in love use their own tongues. Let every eye negotiate for itself and trust no agent. Farewell, therefore, hero. Okay, Claudio? Yea, the same. Will you come with me? With her. Even to yon willow tree that you may weep together. Oh, the poor soldier sags while the prince has got the hero. Yeah, I wish him joy of her. Oh, that's said like an honest farmer. So they sell cows. I pray you, leave me. What? Did you think the prince would have served you thus? I I mean, you now you strike like the blind man. The boy stole your meat and you'll beat the messenger? It will not be. I'll leave you. <laughs> Alas, poor hurt cat. Now will he lick his wounds. But that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. The prince is fool. Ha! Hey, it may be I go under that title because I am married. Yea, but so I am apt to do myself wrong. I am not thus reputed. It is the base, though bitter, disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and thus gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. How oh, now, senor? Uh, Where's the count? Have you seen him? I found him here as melancholy as a bee in winter. I told him, and I think I told him true, that you had got the goodwill of this young lady, mm -hmm. and then I bid him accompany me to yon willow tree, either to be whipped or to weep. To be whipped? What's his fault? Well, the flat transgression of a schoolboy, who, being overjoyed at finding a bird's nest, shows it his companion and has it stolen away from him. I will but teach the bird how to sing, then restore it to the owner. Ah, then bird and groom owe you thanks, and all in all is well. Ah, oh, you know, the Lady Beatrice hath quarrel with you. She said the gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Ah, oh, she misused me past the endurance of a stone. My very visor began to assume uh -huh, uh -huh. life and scold with her. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's fool. I mean, just hurling jest upon jest, imputing me so impossibly that I stood like a man at a mark with the whole iron army firing at me. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. I would not marry her if she were endowed with all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. Come, talk not of her. All this quiet horror and perturbation follows her. Ah, and here she comes. No, no, my lord. W will you command me any service now to the world's end? I will go on the slightest errand now, to the antipodes you can devise to send me on. I will go to the furthest inch of Asia now to fetch you a toothpicker. You have no employment for me? None but to desire your good company. Oh, Lord, here's a dish I love not well. I will not feast on sour tongue. Oh, <laughs> oh Lady Beatrice, you have lost the heart of Senor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Mary, once before, he won it of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. 
Oh. You put him down, lady. You put him down. Better I him than him me, my lord. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to oh. seek. Wherefore now, Count? Why are you sad? Not sad, my lord. No? Sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil, Count. Civil as green grass, and greener still with jealousy. Ah, in faith, lady, I think your blazon to be true. God be sworn, if it be so, his conceit is false. Come, Claudio. I have wooed in thy name, and the rare hero is one. I have broke with her mother, and her goodwill is obtained. <laughs> name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count taketh me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made a match, and all say amen to it. Speak, Count. Tis your cue. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I give away myself for you and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let not him speak neither. Oh. Oh. <laughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Indeed, my lord. I thank it, the poor fool. It keeps on the windy side of care. Oh, my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. <laughs> and so she doth, cousin. Oh, good lord for alliance. Thus all in the world begin to beam whilst I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry hi-ho for a husband. Oh, Lady Beatrice, I shall get you one. I had rather have one of your father's getting. Hath your grace ne'er a brother like you? Your father made excellent husbands, if a maid could come by them. <laughs> Will you have me, lady? Uh, no, my lord. Not unless I may have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. Uh, but I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me. And to be merry best becomes you. Cousins! God give you joy. Niece, would you go look to those things I told you oh, about? Oh, I cry you mercy, aunt, by your grace's pardon. By my troth, a pleasant-spirited lady. There is very little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad. Though she cannot bear to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She mocks her wooers out of suit. Oh. She would make an excellent wife for a Benedict. Oh, Lord, if they were married but a week, they would talk each other mad. Count Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Well, tomorrow, my lord. Time goes on crutches till love have all his rights. Uh, not till Monday, my son. No. Uh, hence, just seven nights. And too brief a time, for all things answer in my mind. Ah, uh, you shake your head at so long a breathing, Claudio. But I warrant thee, time will not go dully by us, for... I will, in the interim, undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Lady Beatrice and Senor Benedict into a mountain of affection. I would fain have it a match if you three would just be some assistance. I am for you, my lord, even though it cost me ten nights' watchings. And I, my lord. And you, gentle hero? No. I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin too. A good husband. And Benedict is not the unhopefulest husband. This I know. <clears throat> well, I shall teach you how to humor your cousin so that she fall in love with Benedict. And with your two helps, we will so practice on Benedict so that he fall in love with Beatrice. <sighs> if we can do this, Cupid's glory shall be ours. <laughs> Come. Let me tell you my drift. It is so the good Count Claudio shall marry the lady hero. Mm. Yea, my lord. But I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment should be medicinal to me. How would you cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me how. 
I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in favor with Ursula, the shy witted kitchen maid to Leonata. Yes, I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. <laughs> what life is there in that to be the death of a marriage? Well, the poison in that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother. Spare not to tell him he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation do you mightily hold up to a contaminated stale, such as Hero. A stale? What proof do I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, and kill Leonata. Look you for any other issue? No, despite them, I'll endeavor anything. Go then. Find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know Hero loves me. Intend a kind of zeal both to the prince and Claudio, both in love of your brother's honor, who hath made this match, and for his friend's reputation, who is thus like to be cousined with the semblance of a maid that you have discovered thus. They'll scarcely believe this without trial, so course, yeah. offer them instances such as to see me, at her lady's chamber window, and hear me call Ursula Hero. For in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that Hero will be absent. Bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. Their fates shall fall. <laughs> I will put that into practice. Be cunning in the working of this and my fees a thousand ducats. I'll go learn the day of their marriage. <laughs> I do much wonder that that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after having laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. I mean, may I be so converted and see with these eyes? I do not think so. Uh, I don't know. I may not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. But till he hath made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is winsome, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. <laughs> but till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. You know, rich shall she be, that's certain. Wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Acute, or I'll never look on her. Mild, or come not near me. Noble of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair uh -huh. shall be of what color it please God. <laughs> ah, the, the prince and Monsieur Amour, I must hide me behind the column. Come, shall we hear this music? Yea, my good lord. See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. <clears throat> Come, Balthazar. Play us a song. Uh, you want to hear me keep butchering this? Oh, please, pray thee, play us a song and let me woo no more. Oh, boy. Okay, tell you what, if this doesn't get you out of your romantic mood, nothing will. <laughs> Come on, let's gear it. Uh, sigh, no more ladies, sigh, no more men. Uh, we're deceivers ever. One foot on land and one on shore to uh, one thing constant never. It's a great song. Uh, and uh, sigh no more and let them go and uh, be wife and Bonnie. Uh, could bring all your sounds of woe to hey, naughty, naughty. Wow, what a gift. Ah, 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 by my troth, a great song. And he had been a dog and should have howled thus, they would have hanged him. Now, Dame Mary, Balthazar, I pray thee, get us some excellent music for tomorrow night. Right, excellent music. Okay, I'll see what I can do. See that you do so. Farewell. Ahem, come hither, Leonata. Was it you that told me of yesterday that uh, your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, aye, aye. Stuck on, stuck on. The trap is set. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. Uh, no, nor I neither. 
but how wonderful that she should so dote on Senior Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits in the wind in this corner? By my troth, I cannot tell what to think of it except for that she loves him with an enraged affection. Hmm, perhaps she doth but counterfeit. Ah, oh, faith, like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit? Uh, there was never counterfeit of a passion so close to the life of passion as she shows it. Ah, I. What effects of passion shows she? Faith the hook well, this fish will bite. <laughs> what effects, my lord? Uh, she will sit you. She told you how, my lord. Uh, she did indeed. I pray thee, you are lazy. <clears throat> I would have thought her spirit invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, especially against Benedict. She hath hit the snare, pull it tight. <clears throat> Has she made her affection known to Senor Benedict? No, and she swears she never will. That is her torment. Ah, tis true indeed. So your daughter says, Shall I, says she, that have so oft encountered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? As so she says when she's beginning to write him. Ah, and with sheet after sheet, you cannot help but find Beatrice and Benedict between her sheets. <laughs> Oh, how she tore the letters a thousand halfpence and railed at herself that she should be so immodest as to write to someone she knew would flout her. I measure his spirit by my own, for if he were to write me, I would flout him. Yea, though I love him, I should. And down upon her knees she falls, weeps. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. Um, my daughter says so, it is true. This... This Beatrice is an excellent, sweet lady, and virtuous. And exceeding wise? In everything but in loving Benedict. Uh, I would that she had bestowed this upon me. I would have daft all other respects and made her half my own. Hero thinks surely she will die. For she says she will die if he love her not, and she will die ere she make her love known. And she will die rather than bait one breath of her accustomed crossness. Uh, will you walk with me, my lords? Uh, dinner is ready. Ah, yes. <clears throat> well, the rest we will hear of it by your daughter. Let it rest a while. <clears throat> I love Benedict well, but I could wish that he so examine himself to see how he is so unworthy such a wonderful lady. If you do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> Let there be the same net cast for her, and that your daughter and her gentlewoman must carry. The sport will be when they hold one in opinion of another's dotage, and no such matter. That's the scene that I would see. Cool. Let us send her out to fetch him in for dinner. <laughs> This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They had the truth of this from Hero. Love me. Why, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say too that she will rather die than show any sign of affection. Ah, I'd never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happy are they that can hear their detractions and put them to mending. They say the lady is lovely, tis true, I can bear them witness, and virtuous, tis so, I cannot reprove it, and wise, but for loving me, and I will be horribly in love with her. Oh. Oh. I may chance have some odd jabs and mocks of wit broken on me because I have railed so long against marriage, but doth not the appetite alter? Shall quips and sentences and these paper bullets of the brain awe man from the truth of his innards? No! The world must be peopled! Oh, here she comes. By this day, she is a fine lady, and I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come in to dinner. Uh, lady Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. <laughs> I took no more pains for the thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. Oh, you took pleasure then in the message? Yay! Just so much as you may take upon a knife's point. 
<laughs> Have you no stomach, senor? Fare thee well. <laughs> uh, against my will, I'm bid to send you come into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> if I do not take pity on her, I'm a villain. And if I do not love her, a coward. I'll go write her a sonnet. <laughs> Good Balthazar, run thee to the parlor where shalt thou find my cousin Beatrice reposing with the prince and Claudio. Whisper in her ear and tell her that I am Margaret, walk in the orchard, and her whole discourse is of her. Say that thou overheardst us, and bid her steal into the shaded brush to hear our purpose. Prithee, fare thee well. Uh, I will do my best with that one. I don't know if that'll work, but she asked for it. Now, dearest aunt, when Beatrice doth come, as we do, Traces Alley, up and down, our talk must only be a Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever a man did merit. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Oh, now soft, for look where Beatrice, like a greyhound, runs, close by the ground to hear our conference. The pleasantest angling is to see the fish cut with her silver fin the silver stream and greedily devour the treacherous bait. <laughs> Come, go we near her, that her ear lose nothing. <laughs> no, truly, Margaret, she is too disdainful. Her spirits are as coy and wild as harpies on the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new trothed lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, dear? Oh, they didn't treat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them that if they loved Beatrice, to never let Benedict know of it. Oh, why for did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve so full and fortunate a bed as ever our Beatrice did lie upon? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart a prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. <laughs> Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eye, must price whatever they look upon in her wit. Ugh, values itself so highly that all else matters seem weak. She cannot love! <laughs> she is so self-endeared. Tis true, and I suppose it's best then that he not know of her love, lest she'd make sport of it. Why, you speak truth. I have never yet saw a man, how wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured, but she would spell him backward. Be he tall, by a lance ill-headed, be he low, a mole near the ground. <laughs> if speaking, why a vein blown with all winds? If silent, why a block moot with none? So she turns every man the wrong side out. Tis true, and such carping is not commendable. But who dared tell her so? If I were to speak, she would mock me into air. <laughs> <laughs> So let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. But surely the lady cannot be so much without true judgment as to refuse so rare and excellent a man as Signor Benedict. No, but rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. Why for would you so do your cousin such a wrong? For surely she cannot be so much without good judgment that she would refuse a man like Signor Benedict Meow. He is the only man of Italy, always except for my dear Claudio. You'll have to forgive me for speaking my mind, niece, but for strength, valor, body, and a total sexiness, there is no man in Italy that is greater than Signor Benedict. Indeed, he hath an excellent good <laughs> name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. Mm. But when are you to be married, dear? Why, every day. <laughs> Tomorrow. Come, go in, and I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel on which is the best to furnish me in tomorrow. 
She's caught, I'll warrant you. Aye, so it looks. Some cupids catch with arrows and some with hooks. <laughs> in mine ears. Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Contempt, farewell. And maiden pride, adieu. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict, uh, love on. I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve, and I may slip no worse of thee than, oh, and sigh. I do but stay until your marriage be consummate, then I go towards Aragon. Ah, I'll bring you thither, my lord, if you'll vouchsafe me. Nay, that would be a greater soil in the gloss of your new marriage, as to show a child his new coat and forbid him to wear it. I would be only so bold with Senor Benedict for his company, for from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot, he is not with mirth. What his heart thinks, his tongue speaks. Gallants, I am not as I have been. So say I, methinks you're sadder. I hope he be in love. In love? Hang him, true aunt. There's not a true drop of blood in his body to be truly touched with love. If he be sad, he wants money. I have a toothache. Draw it. Hang it. You must hang it first, then draw it afterwards. <laughs> On what, a sigh for a toothache? Perhaps you lack an apples? Sure, all may master a grief save he that has it. Nay, but I think he be in love. He brushes his hair a mornings. What should that bode? <laughs> he scrubs himself with musk. Can you smell it out on him? That's natural. That's as much as to say the sweet youth's in love. And the greatest note of it is in his melancholy. And when was he wont to wash his face? Oh, that is a grave sign indeed. Conclude, conclude, conclude. He is in love. <laughs> Nay, but I know who loves him. Uh, one that I would know too, though I warrant one that knows him not. And his ill conditions, and in despite of all, dies for him. Who, <laughs> man? Who is it? Nay, and this is no cure for the toothache. <coughs> Signor Leonata, walk with me. I, I have studied eight or nine wise words that these hobby horses must not hear. <laughs> oh, to break with him about Beatrice. Is even so. My lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. Uh, I would speak with you if it would suit your leisure. In private? If it please you, although the noble Claudio may also hear as the matter concerns him. Why, what is the matter? I mean you to be wed tomorrow. You know that he does. I know that not when he knows what I know. Uh, if there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I don't love you from what I'll reveal now, but Listen to what I have to say first, and aim better once you've heard it. Come now, what is the matter? Uh, the lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Yes, your hero, Leonata's hero, every man's hero. Disloyal? Uh, I could call her much worse. Think of you of a worse title, and I would fit her to it. But you must not believe me without reason. Come with me tonight, and I will show you her chamber window being entered on the very night of her wedding by another man. And if after that you still love her, wed her. But I think it would suit your honor better to change your mind. May this be so? I would not think it. Come with me and I will show you enough. And when you've seen and heard more, proceed accordingly. If I should see anything tonight why I should not marry her, tomorrow in the congregation where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I have wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join thee to shame her. I will disparage her no further until you've been my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight and let the issue present itself. Oh, day, untowardly turned! Oh, mischief grossly thwarting! Oh, plague right well prevented! So will you say when you've seen the sequel. Thank you. 
got buried. Yes. Uh, I do. I find you here to be the most senseless and quick man for undercover people of the watch. Therefore, may I use a lamp? This is your job. You are to comprehend all grass of the men. You are to beat any man's death in the crimson way. How if you will not stand? I beseech you. What all friends? Oh, Pietro, is it you? No. Peace, <laughs> stir not. <gasps> Pietro, I say. Maintain thy post, she'll never have seen us. <gasps> oh, God's blood, I get me in a scrape, and of course a scab would follow. Stand me close here, for it kind of drizzles rain, and I, like a true drunkard, will utter all to thee, Pietro. <laughs> Tonight, this very night I have earned of Don John 1,000 ducats. Ah, indeed. When rich villains have need of poor ones, the poor will make what price they will. <laughs> I have tonight wooed Ursula, old Leonardo's kitchen lady, by the name of Hero. <laughs> Such ever-changing rules is ever succulent preparation for dams of true experience and healthy vigor. Oh, she leans me out of her lady's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. Oh, I tell this tale vilely. Why lookest thou amiss, Pietro? I uh, do apologies. Please do please pr proceed. Oh, I should first tell thee how the prince Claudio and my master, planted, placed, and possessed by my master, Don John, saw afar in the orchard this amiable, amiable encounter. And thought the <laughs> Ursula was hero. Two of them did, the prince and Claudio. But the devil, my master, knew she was Ursula. And partly by his oaths, which first possessed him, and partly by the dark night, oh, which did deceive him, but chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander Don John had made. Oh, away went Claudio in rage and swore he would shame her that next morn. We <laughs> charge you in the prince's name, stand! Oh, well done, under constable! We have here comprehended the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the Commonwealth. Signora, thou art appropended. What? Speak not a word till thy properest arrangement has been sluiced and fettered extraneously. What? Constable, 
Lead on! Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Good Balthazar, wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. You got it. Oh, and bid her come hither. In her it is. <laughs> By my troth, the other necklace were finer. Nay, prithee, good aunt, I'll wear this. But the other is so much better, and I don't doubt your cousin will say so too. My cousin is a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. I do like your new gown and faith. I tell you that I once saw the Duchess of Milan's gown that they praise so highly. Oh, that exceeds, they say. Oh, what a dish clock compared to yours. Oh, golden cloth, the cuts, the sleeves set with pearls and wrapped all around in a beautiful blue tinsel. <laughs> but for a lovely, fashionable, and elegant gown, Yours is worth a thousand of it. Oh, God, give me joy to wear it. For my heart is exceedingly heavy. Oh, oh, oh it'll be heavier soon with the weight of a husband. Oh. Fie upon thee, art not ashamed. Ashamed of speaking honorably? Is not marriage honorable? Is not your husband honorable? So long as bad thinking does not best true speaking, I'll offend no one. What harm in the heavier for a husband? So long as he's the right husband and the right wife. Oh, ask your cousin Beatrice else. Here she comes. Good morrow, cuz. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now do you speak in the sick tune? It's almost five o'clock, cousin. Tis time you were ready. By my troth, I am exceeding ill. Hi-ho. These gloves the Count sent me, they are an excellent perfume. Oh, I am stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. Oh, a maid and stuffed? Well, get you some of that Cardius Benedictus and lay it against your heart. Tis the only thing for a qual. There, thou prickster with a thistle. Benedictus? Why Benedictus? You have some moral on this Benedictus? Oh, no, 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 my lady. I meant plain holy thistle. Now, you may think that I think that you are in love, but I am not such a fool as to think all of that. Yet, uh, Benedict was another such one. He had forswore love, and now he is a man and eats his meat without grudging. And as how you, miss, may be converted, well, I know not. But methinks you see with your eyes as other women do. These words are frenzied arrows fired without a mark. And yet they all ring true. Bullying this poor girl, Maggie. She's probably got. Oh, uh, Lady Margaret, uh, we are ready for Hero out there. Oh, help me get ready. Good cuss, good aunt, good Valvane. <laughs> Stand you off, Balthazar. What you with me, honest neighbor? Yeah. Mary, I would have some confidence with you, madam, that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you can see it is a busy time Ooh, with me. Oh, this it is, madam. Mary, indeed it is, madam. What is it, my good friends? Under Constable Seacole, madam, speaks a little off the matter. A handsome fellow, but alas, his wits are not so blunt as, God help, I would desire they were. But, if faith, honest as the skin between his brows. In faith, I'm as honest as any man living, as uh, that uh, man and no honester than I. Neighbours, you are tedious. Oh, oh. <laughs> it please your worship, say so. But we are the poor Duke's officers. Uh, but truly, for mine own part, if I were as tedious as a king, I could find in my heart to bestow it all upon your worship. And so would I. All of thy tediousness on me. Yea, and for a thousand pounds. A thousand more pounds. <laughs> And I would fain know what it is you have to say. Oh, well, Mary, madam, I'll watch this knight aftain as errant a knave as any in Messina. Oh, a fine man, madam. He will be talking. 
As they say, when the looks are in, the wit is out. God help us, it is a world to see. Well said, Ifeith, neighbor Seiko. Oh. Oh. Well, God's a good man, and two men ride of a horse, one must ride behind. In honest soul, if faith, madam, by my troth he is, has ever broke bread. But God is to be worshipped. All people are not alike. Alas, good neighbour. Indeed, neighbour, he comes too short of you. No, gifts that God gives. I must leave you. Ah, one word, madam. I'll watch. Madam, have indeed apprehended an auspicious person, and we would have her examined this morning before your worship. Take her examination yourself, bring it to me, and uh, go away. Oh, it, it, it shall be profligate, Your Honor. Yes, Dr drink some wine ere you go. Oh. Fairly well. Uh, Lady Leonata, the people of Messina are standing ready for you to give your daughter's hand. I will wait on them. Let's go. <coughs> ah, ah, go, go, good partner. Go, go. Bring your pen and inkhorn and meet me at the jail. We are to examination this woman. And we must do it wisely. Oh, we will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Grab your tools of excommunication and meet me at the jail! Francis, brief, I pray you, to the simple parts of marriage, and we'll recount the particular duties afterwards. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady. No. Uh, to be married to. You come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this count. I do. If either of you should know of any inward impediment on why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any, Count? I dare speak for him, none. What we dare do, what we may do, what we daily do, not knowing what we do. How now, interjections? Well, why then some be of laughing as ha, ha, he. Stand thee by, friar. Mother, will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your daughter? As freely as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Uh -huh. Sweet Prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonata, take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold, how like a maid she blushes here. Comes not that blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear, all you that see her, that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is not. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. My lord, if you in your own proof have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity... I know what you would say. If I have known her, you would say I have embraced her as a husband. No, Leonata, I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to his sister, showed bashful sincerity and comely love. And seemed I ever otherwise to you. Out on the seam. You seem to me as Diana, as chaste as the bud ere it be blown, but you are Venus in your lusty blood. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand here dishonored, having gone about linking my dear friend to a common stale. <gasps> are these words spoken, or do I but dream? Well, these words are spoken, and these words are true. This looks not like a nuptial. Oh, God, true! What man was he that talked with you yesternight, out at your window, betwixt the hours of twelve and one? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I spoke with no man at that hour, my lord. You are no maid. Leonata, I am sorry you must hear. But on mine honor, my brothers and this grievant counts did see her, hear her, 
at that hour, last night. Thus, fair lady, I am sorry for thy much misgovernment. <gasps> oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been, if half thy outward graces had been placed about thy thoughts and counsels of thy heart. <laughs> but fare thee well, most foul, most fair, fare well. <laughs> Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Why, how now, cousin? Wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. How doth the lady? Oh, dead, I think. Aunt, help! Hero, why, hero? Aunt, Senor Benedict, friar, fate taken not away thy heavy hand, for death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. Oh, how now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Live not, hero, ope not thy eyes. For did I think thou wouldst not quickly die, would, after countless curses more, strike at the line? Oh, no. Why wast thou so lovely in mine eyes? Mine I loved, and mine I praised, and mine I'm uh, so proud on, mine. Lady, please be patient, for mine own part, I know not what to say. I'm so tired in wonder. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Hear me a little, for I have only silent been so long by giving way unto this course of fortune. By noting of the lady, I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames beat away those blushes. And in her eye, there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my reverence nor divinity, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. But friar, you see, she denies it not. Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that to accuse me. I know not. If I know of any man alive more than that which made him modesty doth warrant, then let all my sins lack mercy. Oh, my mother, prove to you that any man in me conversed at hours unmet, or that I yesternight maintained that change of words with any creature that refused me, hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprison in the princes. Two of them have the very bent of honor, and if they be misled in this, the practice of it lies in Don John the brother, whose very soul toils in the frame of villainies. I know not. If what they say is true, then these hands shall tear her. <laughs> but if they wrong her honor, then the proudest of them will well hear of it. Pause a while and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince is left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in and publish it that she is dead indeed. Maintain a mourning ostentation and on your family's old monument hang mournful epitaphs and perform all rites that appertain unto a burial. What shall this do? What will become of this? She dying as it must be so maintained, upon the instant that she was accused, will be lamented, pitied, and excused. So will it fare with Claudio, when he hears she died upon his words. The idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his secret mind. Then will he mourn, and wish he had not so accused her. Let this be so, and doubt not, but success will fashion the event in better shape than I can lay down in likelihood. But if all aim but this be leveled false, the supposition of this lady's death will quench the wonder of her infamy. And if it sort not well, you may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation, in some reclusive and religious life, out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and natures. Let the friar counsel you in this. 
And though you know my inwardness and love is very much into the Prince and Claudio, on my honor I will deal in this as secretly and justly as your soul should with your body. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Tis well consented. Presently away. For the strangest ills strangely concoct the cure. Your wedding's but prolonged. Be strong. Endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason, I do it freely. Surely, I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. <laughs> How much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. Well, may a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. <laughs> is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not? It were as possible for me to say that I love nothing in the world so well as you, but believe me not, and, and yet I lie not. I, I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? Not with any sauce that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. Why then, God forgive me. What, what offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me at a happy hour. I was about to protest that I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for you. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, good Beatrice. Oh, I am gone, though I am here. Now, there is no love in you. Nay, I pray you let me go. Beatrice. In faith I will go. We'll be friends first. Will you dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved the height of a villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man. What, bear her in hand until they come to take hands? And then with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Nay, but Beatrice. Talk with a man out at a window? A proper saying. Hear me, Sweet Beatrice. Sweet hero is wrong. She's slandered. She's undone. Beatrice. Princes and counts. Oh, surely a princely testimony, a goodly count. Count confection, a sweet gallant, surely. Oh, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend would be a many friend would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into curtsies, valor into compliment. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing, and therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, <laughs> by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Knew you in your soul the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Hey, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand. And so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. And, and now go, come for your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so, farewell.
is your name, friend? I am a lady of gentle birth, neighbor. My name is Boraccio. Yeah. Pray you write down, Mistress Gentle Birth Boraccio. Do you serve God? Yea, neighbor. I hope. <laughs> write down, she hopes she serves God. <laughs> and write God first, for God forbid but God should go before such a villain. <laughs> Mistress, it is proved already that you are little better than a false knave, and it will go near to be thought so shortly. How answer you for yourself? Uh, Mary, neighbor, I say I am none. Marvelous witty lass, I assure you, but I'll go about with her. <laughs> Sirrah, a word in your ear. I say to you, you are a false knave. I say to you, I am none. No. For God, she's firm in her tale. Have you writ down that she is none? This one said, Constable, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Uh, write down, Don John, a villain. Why? This is flat perjury to call a prince's brother villain. What heard you her say else? Oh, Ma Mary Constable, that she had received with Don John a thousand ducats for accusing the lady hero falsely. Oh, flat burglary as ever was committed. Oh, what else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean by his words to disgrace hero before the whole assembly and not to marry her. Oh, villain! Thou wilt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? Uh, that was all. Yeah. And this is more, mistress, than you can deny. Don John is this morning secretly stolen away. <laughs> Hero was in this manner accused, <laughs> in this very manner refused, and upon the grief of this suddenly died. <laughs> Come, bear her away. What? Dead? Nay, off you, coxcomb. Oh, God, do I lie? Where's the ink? Do write down the prince's officer coxcombed. Come, bind her! Thou naughty varlet! Away! You are an ass! You are an ass! <laughs> Dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not suspect my years? Oh, that he were able to write me down an ass! But remember, constable, that though it be not written down, yet do not forget that I am an ass! <laughs> Nay, thou villain! I am an officer, and what's more, a householder, and what's more, as pretty a piece of flesh as any is in Messina, oh. <laughs> and one that knows the law, go to, and a rich person enough, go to, and, and one that hath two gowns, and everything handsome about them. <laughs> oh, that I had been writ down an ass! We're going to take a quick pause because the park needs their chairs back, apparently. Um, so anyone who is using one of the parks provided chairs or tables, um, I'm sorry, I guess we got to give them back. We can have our blankets. <laughs> but we, yeah, well, we've got blankets on the side, we can turn over. <laughs> this is part of Shakespeare wrote this. Shakespeare wrote this. It's the moving of the chairs. so much for helping you guys. I really appreciate that. Okay, and now without any further ado, much ado about nothing. <laughs> if you continue thus, you will kill yourself, and tis not wisdom to second grief so against yourself. I pray you, cease thy counsel. Bring me a mother who so loved her daughter, and bid her speak of patience. Measure her woe the length and breadth of mine, and let it answer strain for strain. If such a one can smile, then bring her me, and of her I will gather patience. There is no such, therefore give me no counsel. My griefs cry louder yet. 
Therein do we from children nothing differ? This I pray you, I will be flesh and blood. Then take not all the harm upon yourself. Let those who did offend you suffer too. There thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My, my soul tells me that Hero is belied. Yes, and thus shall Claudio know, and the prince, and all who have dishonored her. Here comes the prince and Claudio hastily. Ah, good evening, good evening. Good day to both of you. Hear me, my lords. We have some haste, Leonata. Some haste, my lords. Well, fare thee well, my lords. Not so hasty now, are we? Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old woman. If she could right her wrongs with quarreling, there's some of us here who would lie low. Who wrongs her? Harry, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, Ooh. thou all. Oh, nay, never place thy hand upon my <laughs> sword, I fear thee not. Mary, beshrew my hand if it should give your age such cause of fear. In faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man. Never sneer and jest at me, were I not old. No, Claudio, to thy head, thou hast so wronged me and mine innocent child that I must lay my reverence by. I challenge thee with my hairs thus gray. I say, thou hast belied mine innocent child. You speak not right, old woman. My lord, my lord, I will prove it upon his body if he dare. Despite his nice fence and his active practice, his may of youth and his bloom of lustihood. Away, I will not have to do with you. Canst thou so daft me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou killst me, boy, thou killst a man. <laughs> he shall kill two of us. Kill me first. Answer me, boy. Win me or wear me. Sister. Come, little boy, come follow me. Huh. What? I know them, toadying, slackardly, fashion-mongering boys who lie and flaunt and flout, deceive and slander, and speak half a dozen dangerous words of how they would kill their enemies if they durst. And what of it? Nothing. <laughs> no, let me deal with them. Sister, Honorable <laughs> both, we will not wake your patience. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death, but she was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord. We will not hear you. No. Come, sister, away. I will be heard. And shall, or some of us will smart for it. Ah, see, oh. here's the man we went to seek. Uh, now, senor, what news? Senor, you are almost come to part a fray. <laughs> we had like to have had our two noses snapped off by two old ones without teeth. Leonata and her sister. What thinkest thou? Had we fought, I doubt we would have been too old and young for the two of them. In a false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. Oh, we have been up and down to seek thee, for we are high-proof melancholy and would fain have it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy wit? It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? Dost thou wear thy wit by thy side? Never any did so, though very many have been beside their wit. Uh, I will bid thee. Draw, as we do the minstrels. Draw to pleasure us. Simon, honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? What? Courage, man. Though care killed a cat, thou hast enough metal in thee to kill care. Sir, I will meet your wit head on and you charge it against me. I pray you choose another subject. By this light, he looks ever changing. I think he be angry indeed. If he be, he knows how to change his course. May I speak a word in your ear? God save me from a challenge. You are a villain. I jest not. I will make this good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right in this, or I'll subscribe you a coward. You have killed the sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will meet you, so I may have good cheer. Ah, a feast? A feast? In faith, I thank him. He hath bid me to dinner with a chicken. <laughs> the which, if I do not carve most curiously, say my knife's not. 
Shall I not find a gamecock, too? Sir, your wit ambles well. I'll tell thee how Beatrice praised thy wit the other day. Aye, indeed, at last she said with a sigh, ah, he was ever the properest man in all of Italy. For the which she wept heartily and said she cared not. Aye, that she did. Then she said if she did not hate him deadly, then she must love him dearly. Come, when shall we set that savage bull's horns on sensible Benedict's head? Yea, and texts above, here lies Benedict the married man. Fare you well, boy! You know my mind. I will leave you in this gossip-like humor. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you, but I must discontinue your company. Your brother is fled Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. As for my lord Lackbeard there, I shall hear from him. And until then, peace be with him. He is an earnest. In most profound earnest. And that challenge thee. Most sincerely. What let you be? Pluck up my heart and be sad. Did he not say my brother has fled? From you, mistress gentle birth. But why how now? My brother's woman, Braccio, and bound officers, to what offense has this one done? No, Mary, sir, she has committed false report. Moreover, she has spoken untruths. Secondarily, she is a slanderer. Sixth and lastly, she has belied a lady. Thirdly, she has verified unjust things. And to conclude, she is a lying knave. <clears throat> Firstly, I ask thee what she has done. Thirdly, I ask thee what is the offense. Sixth <clears throat> and lastly, what is the charge? And to conclude, why she is committed. Why rightly reasoned. This constable is too cunning to be understood. <laughs> uh, what's your offense? Sweet prince, I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light, who in the night overheard me confessing how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the lady hero, and how in the orchard you saw me court Ursula in hero's garments. My villainy they have upon the record. The lady is dead upon our false accusation. Briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Run this speech not like iron through your blood. I have drunk poison while she uttered it. And my brother has set you upon this? Yea, and paid me richly for it. Uh, he is composed of deceit and treachery. And fled is he upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image doth appear in the rare semblance that I loved at first. Come, bring away the plaintiff. I have reformed Signora Leonata of the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify when time and place shall serve that I am an ass. Here is Master Signora Leonata. <laughs> Where is the villain? Let me see her eyes. If you wish to know your wronger, look on me. Art thou the villain that hath stolen the life of my innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain. Thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men. A third is fled, who had a hand in it. I thank thee, princes, for my daughter's death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. T'was bravely done, if you bethink you of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Impose me to what penance your invention can lay upon my sin, yet sin I not be the mistaking. By my troth, nor I. And yet to satisfy this good old woman, I would bend myself to any task she enjoined me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live, for that were impossible. But I pray you both, possess the people here in Messina, how innocent she died. Hang an epitaph upon her tomb and sing it to her bones. Sing it tonight. Tomorrow morning, come to my house, and though you may not be my son-in-law, yet be my nephew. My sister has a daughter. He is almost a copy of my child who's dead. 
She alone is heir to us both. Give her the rights you should have given her cousin. And so dies my revenge. Oh, noble madam, yeah. your overkindness doth bring tears for me. I do embrace your offer. Tomorrow then, for tonight, I take my leave. I must face to face this Ursula, who I feel was packed in all this wrong. No, by myself she was not, nor knew not when she did when she spoke to me, but hath always been just and virtuous in anything I do know by her. Yeah. Moreover, madam, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me ass. <laughs> Pray you, examine her upon that point. I thank you for your care and honest pains. Take your charge and remand her to the jailer. So leaves an, an errant knave, your worship. I, I, God keep your worship. I, I wish your worship well. God restore you to health. I, I humbly give you leave to depart. And if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come, neighbor. Tomorrow, my lords, fare thee well. We will not fail you. Tonight I'll mourn with Hero. And I shall talk with Ursula. <laughs> oh, good Mistress Margaret. Deserve well at my hands by helping me to a speech with sweet Beatrice? If I do, will you then write a speech in praise of my great beauty? In so high a style that no man living shall o'ertop it. For in most comely truth thou deservest it. But no man shall be o'ertop me. Why must I always be on top? <laughs> Your wit is as quick as the greyhound's leg. Well, then let me call Lady Beatrice to you, because last time I looked, she had legs. Oh, and therefore bid her run. <laughs> well, we're halfway there. Well, I am mean in singing, but in loving Leander, the good swimmer, Hercules, the wrestler, and a whole book full of these heroes whose names yet run smoothly in the even road of a blank verse, but they were never so turned over and over as my poor self in love. Mary, I cannot find it out in rhyme. I, I have tried. I can find no rhyme for school, but fool. An innocent rhyme for lady, but baby. An even more innocent rhyme for a scorn horn. A hard rhyme. No, I I was not born under a rhyming planet. Oh, Lady Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I called thee? Oh, yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Well, stay but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now. And yet, ere I go, <laughs> let me go with that I came for, which is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon shall I kiss thee. A foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath. And therefore I will depart, unkissed. You have frighted the word out of his very sense, so forcible is thy wit. But I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and I will either hear from him or I'll subscribe him a coward. And now, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? <laughs> for them all together, for they did maintain so politic a state of evil that they will not admit any good part to intermingle with them. But for which of my good parts did you first suffer love for me? Oh, suffer love, a good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. Oh, in spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours. For truly I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. <laughs> how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill too. Well? Drink fluids, get rest, and love me, and mend. And uh, on there I'll leave you, because here comes one in haste. Okay. You guys are going to want to hear this. The, 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 the whole drama with, with, with Hero and, and, and the wedding? Nonsense. Forget about it. There was no other guy. She was framed. Uh, the, 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 the whole town's talking about it. I guess, like, Don John did something or said something. Look, come and see for yourselves. I've got, like, ten other guys to tell. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Will you go hear the news, senor? I will live in thy eyes, be buried in thy lips, and die in thy lap, and moreover, I will go with thee to thy aunt.
Is this the monument to my hero? So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Lay thou there upon the tomb, praising her when I am dumb. Now unto thy bones, good night. Yearly will I do this right. Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the prince and Claudio who accused her, but Ursula had some fault in this, unbeknownst to her, as it appears. But you know, Ursula made no more wrong than nourishing herself. Now, if those men would value virginity so highly, then as they would be virgins, for as long as they choose, more so the better. But let them keep their virginal decrees from off our heavenly bodies. Now I pray you, sister, the plan. Uh, withdraw into a chamber by yourselves, and when I call for you, come forth, hither, masked. The Prince and Claudio have promised by this hour to visit me. You know your office, sister. Yes, I am to play mother to my niece, your daughter, and present her to young Claudio. Idiot. Dear Friar, I, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me or undo me, one of them, in the holy state of... Marriage. My heart is with your liking and my help. Look, here come the prince and Claudio. Oh. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry my brother's daughter? I'll hold my mind were she an other month. Very well, Balthazar, call her forth. Here's the friar ready. Good morrow, Benedict. What's the matter that you have such a February face? So full of frost, gloom, and cloud. I think he thinks upon the savage bull. <laughs> Tosh, fear not, man. We'll tip thy horns with gold. Is this the lady I must seize upon? This is the same, and I do give you her. Well then, she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. No, that you shall not do until you take her hand before the friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand before this holy friar. Another hero. The, the, the same hero. The hero that was dead. Uh, she died, my lord, whilst her slander lived. I am your husband. If you like of me. Why then, not liking, I shall not be taking. You'd sooner shame than trust me. Easier shed tears than claim responsibility. And thinking that your words did end my life. I like you not, and I am not your wife. Yes, yes! <laughs> All this amazement, can I qualify? Soft and fair, Friar. Beatrice? Uh, I answer to that name. What is your will? <laughs> what? <laughs> Do not you love me? Why, no. No more than reason. Why then? Your aunt and the prince and Claudio are much deceived. They swore you did. Well, do not you love me? No, no, no more than reason. Well, then my cousin Hero and Margaret are much deceived, for they did swear you did. Th they swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you, you do not love me? No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Um, cousin, surely you love the gentleman. And I can swear on it that he loves you, for here's a sonnet written in his own hand, praising you. And here's another written in my cousin's hand, proclaiming her love unto Benedict. 
Oh, a miracle. Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I'll have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. Peace, I'll stop thy mouth. Nay, I yours. How now, Benedict the married man? <laughs> I, I tell thee what, Prince, a college of wisecrackers cannot flout me out of my humor. No, with that humor and this wit, here's one marriage will ne'er suffer merriment. Hi ho! <laughs> oh, to see one of my nieces happily married yet! And what methinks it's all your like to get. <laughs> come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance ere we are married, that we may lighten our hearts and our heels. We'll have dancing afterwards. Nay, first of my word. Therefore, play, play music. Uh, Claudio. Yeah. Here. Oh. We'll be reconciled anon. We take cheer in that we rather dance than duel. And there's nothing for it but to take the bull by the horns. Yeah. Prince, thou art sad. Get thee a guitar and get thee a friend. And Balthazar? Hey. Uh, so, <laughs> great. Guess what? I got news for you. Uh, the soldiers found Don John. That's interesting. No, think not on him till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for him. All right. Strike up music. Do this instead. <laughs> oh. I know more, ladies, I know more men would as seem as ever. One foot <laughs> on the Got the donations teapot over there, but otherwise have a great wait, night. And wait, thank wait, you. wait, 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 sorry. sorry oh, I guess not. In front of everybody, I just have to give one final huge thank you uh, to Quinn, who literally made all of this happen with no money, and he he directed, he produced, he stage managed, he acted, as you saw. Right. So just a big round of applause for Quinn. <laughs> Support your local high school. Give me your money. Yeah.